But the reason they stopped printing them is because people were taking two-hour bills just like this. And they were tearing them into two ones. See? Watch. Like that. Coin goes inside of the bottle. One card, frozen, in the very center of a block of ice, takes it back. Throw. And one card sticks in the center. This is a good trick. This is one of my favorite tricks. This is one of my favorite tricks. And, and you get to pick a card in this trick. <laughs> so I'm going to do it real fair. So what I'll do is I'll just dribble the cards down, just like that. Anytime you'd like me to stop, just say, stop dribbling. OK? <laughs> stop dribbling. Right here? I can go more if you'd like. That's fine. OK. This time you've stopped me at the 10 of clubs. Obviously, it could have been any one of those. But now, I could even have you sign that 10 of clubs. But you might think that I'm a forger. So rather than have you sign that ten of clubs, I want to tear a corner from it. I want to tear the corner from this ten of clubs. And in this way, you'll be able to identify this card the same way that your thumbprint identifies you. It'll be proof positive identification. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Good. <laughs> Glad. I'll click it off. There you go. Hold on to that ten of clubs corner. We'll go ahead and get rid of the rest of the deck. now. I'm going to take these, or this card, and tear it into little pieces. Now we need to keep those pieces kind of close together, so I'm going to use, I'll use this paper clip. We'll clip them together. I'll take the pieces, clip them together, and I need to squeeze them very tightly. So I'll squeeze, nothing up the sleeve. If I squeeze just like that, every single one of those pieces vanishes, leaving only the paper clip behind to show that the pieces had ever been there at all. Now, I could reproduce those pieces one at a time if I wanted to. They, maybe you just think I was hiding them from you. It would be better to reproduce that card completely restored except for that one piece which you used to identify with. And I'll do that for you if you'll answer a question. It's an easy one. Does the word icicle appear on this box anywhere? Bicycle deck of cards. Oh, it's a bicycle. That's right. You see, if I take the B and cover it, we have icicle. Mm -hmm. See, it's not a bicycle. It's a bicycle deck. And for every bicycle deck, I'll put this up here to open it out on, we have a iceberg. You see? One card frozen oh. in the very center of a block of ice. <laughs> Now, one thing is important is that you notice that it's not frozen on the bottom. It's not frozen on the top. It, it's actually in the very center of that block of ice. But one thing is crucial, and it's that corner. See, if that corner doesn't match that card exactly, then the trick is a farce instead of a miracle. See? Because it has to come directly from that card. Are you ready? So what I'll do is I'll chip the ice from around that corner and ask you to confirm it. Was that the corner torn directly from that card? Yes, it is. How about that? <laughs> you can put this in your purse and take it home Thank with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, it's a good seat, isn't it? It sure is. It's better from back there. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you all. And uh, I have something, well, perhaps I should have prepared this well in advance. But this is something that I came up with in the past couple of days, and I think you might be kind of interested in it. I came up with it when I was having lunch, and I think about magic a lot, and I thought, well, I'll do a trick with everyday objects, something that I used, for example, when I was having lunch. And maybe it's just the way that my mind thinks, but I came up with a very simple plot, okay? So all we'll have to follow in this particular case is a, is a little cork ball. Actually, it's a little rubber ball covered uh, with a little knitting of some sort there. Now, the plot here is really very simple. In this particular one, all you'll have to do, at one time or another, the ball will either be in the can or it'll be out of the can. But whenever it happens, it'll happen by magic. So some magic will take place. It's not a, necessarily a gambling game. So for example, in this case, I place the ball inside the can. All I have to do is touch the end of the wand like this and wave and tap, and the ball comes out of the can like that at the tip of the wand, leaving, of course, the can perfectly empty. Now, you can do the exact same thing in reverse. For example, in this particular case, I can take the ball, 
tap it with the wand, it completely disappears, only to reappear back inside the can. You see, it goes in reverse, comes out, and it goes back in. But I'll make it a little simpler for you. In this particular case, I'll take the ball and place it inside of the pocket, and still it comes back to the can. I'll even put the lid on top of the can like this. I'll place the ball in the pocket. And even with the lid on, the ball comes back like, oh, oh wait a second. <laughs> If I touch just like that, another one comes out. So now we have two. But at this particular case, I'll go ahead and I'll take the lid and I'll place the lid away because we no longer need the lid anymore. See, despite the fact that the large balls came out of it, just a casting, by casting a shadow over the can, just like that, the hermetical lid once more returns right down here, as well as the sausages. <laughs> Proving it's not only a good trick, but a decent meal. <laughs>